Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. This your brother Eli. This your brother Paul Shabbat Shalom. Coming live from the school of the servants, bringing you another exhortation on this Shabbat, giving, of course, our honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? We want to give a, a, a big barakata to the brothers and sisters laboring in this truth, and another barakata three times to the brothers who are, you know, continually to, to endure, making their body a sacrifice, going out to the highways and hedges, exhorting brothers around them, giving back to the community as much more as the sisters. You know what I'm saying? This Sabbath, we coming at you with another, you know what I'm saying, exhortation, warning us and compelling us to take heed to the word of the Lord, and you got to let the old man go. You know what I'm saying? In these last days, there are a lot of things going on. You know what I'm saying? A lot of judgments that's going out from the Heavenly Father. And what we're doing is trying to compel our people to repent and come back to the Heavenly Father before it's too late, man. Got to take heed to the warning. The Bible is nothing but words of exhortation from our forefathers warning us to escape the ways and, you know what I'm saying, philosophies and lust in Babylon. You know what I'm saying? In these last days. So let's kick it off with the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 24. Come. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 118, and verse 24. Read. This is the day. Which the Lord, Yahweh, hath made. Right. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So this day right here particularly is a day that Yahweh has made, the Sabbath day. You know what I'm saying? He has given the Sabbath day to us Israelites to be a covenant between us and him. So we will rejoice in the Sabbath day and we will honor it and reverence it in the way that Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, told us to reference the Sabbath day. Now give me Luke 4. Go to the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. And shalom on to everybody who tuning in and that will tune in most high willing. If this video reach you, I pray and take heed to it. Read that. Comes the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Read. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was. As his what? As his custom was. So who we reading about? We reading about Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai had a custom that he did on this day that the most high gave us. Right? Read. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And stood up for to read. Read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. Right. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of is the... It, is oh, it. Is it? Right. Yeah, so what well, Yahweh Shai's custom was is that every Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and he opened the book of the Bible. And he read from it, chiefly from Isaiah. So what we like to do is on the Sabbath day, we like to come in and read from the book of our fathers and get motivated and exhortated from their words that whatever the Most High gave them, that he might apply it to our life and it might help us be beneficial to our ministry, right? So we're going to kick it off, man. We're going to go to the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 14. We're going to dive and deal with the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 14 a little bit today. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of time we read these prophecies and we read these things and we really don't dive deep into it. You know what I'm saying? We don't really get the full understanding sometimes. We just pick and choose what we want to read out of it. When when you really read it sometimes from top to bottom, you get a deep understanding and a true warning of what the Most High was telling us. So again, this the, 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 the whole point of this exhortation is to take heed to the, the warning that the Most High has given us and let go of the old man. You got to let go of the old man, man. Sometimes it might be hard because there's so much lust around us, but it can be done. If it couldn't have been done, the Most High wouldn't have allowed it to happen, right? So let's read this. Start at verse 1. <clears throat> Come on, this is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, from the top. And it came to pass upon the third day. Mm -hmm. I sat under an oak, right? and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me and said, Esdras, Esdras. And I said, here I am, I Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talk with him when my people served in Egypt. So what is what is Ezra referring to right now? Get the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse 2. So it was an account, the same way we just saw that the, you know what I'm saying, the Most High spoke through Ezra through a burning bush. He said he spoke to Moses in the same manner. So let's read on that real quick in the book of Exodus chapter 3. Come on, it's the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 2. Read. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Matter of fact, start at verse 1. So like, Come on, verse 1. Come on, this is the book of Exodus chapter 3, starting verse 1. Read. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Read. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. 
and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the, the mountain of Horeb is in Mount Sinai. Shalom, Shalom. Hey, I run four o'clock, King. Four o'clock. <laughs> I'll meet you up at four o'clock, bro. <laughs> so, um, yeah, come. So read that part again. Come. This is three and verse one. The verse two. Oh, verse two. No. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burnt with fire. And the bush burnt with fire, read. And the bush was not consumed. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw nigh, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, Read. for the place whereon thy standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now look at the key point that the Most High through his son Yahweh going to tell Moses in, throughout this burning bush. Read. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, Read. and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. So the symbolic point of it, and the key thing is this, is you got to understand that what? The Most High spoke through Moses through a burning bush the same way he spoke with Ezra. During the time of Moses, we were slaves and subject to servitude in the land of Egypt. During the time of Ezra, we were doing the same thing through the Persian Mede captivity, right? So now... We're not going to go through that because in the, at the end of it, the Most High gave, that was the first time the Most High spoke to through Moses and told Moses he was going to use him to deliver his people Israel out of the affliction and from the land of Egypt, right? So now let's go back to the book of 2 Ezra chapter 14 and read verse 3 again. 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse 3. Right. Then said he unto me, in the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talked with him. When my people served in Egypt. What we just read through Exodus 3, read. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai, where I held him by me a long season. And he held him by him a, long, a long season. So in the same place that he spoke to him through a bush, he brought him back to that same place and held him there for a long season. So let's read about that as well. So we're going to break this Ezra 14 down a couple of chapter verses in the second Ezra down verse for verse and get the understanding and the context of what's taking place here. So give me the book of Exodus chapter 24. So we're going to see this. We're going to read about this account. Exodus 24 and 10. So sometimes it's good, man, to go back and research these things. When you read certain verses, go back and find the context of when it actually took place and go read about it because you will see there's some heavy things involved in that within reading it. So Exodus 24 and 10. Come, this is the book of Exodus chapter 24 and verse number 10. As a matter of fact, start at verse 7 so we'll see what took place. Come, Exodus 24 and verse number 7. Read. <clears throat> and he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said, will we do all right. and be obedient? And he said, we'll be obedient. So this is when the Most High, when the Moses gave us the covenant and we agreed to keep everything that the Most High told us to keep. And this is the partaking of the covenant, read. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord had made with you concerning all these words. Read. Then went up Moses and Aaron. And a and a dad and Abahu Abahu and seventy of the elders of Israel and watch this read and they saw the God of Israel and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. So who was they referring to? They saw Yahweh shot and they said and they saw him and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. Read. And as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And as it was the body in the body of heaven in his clearness. So when they looked up, they seen Yahweh Shai standing up above them in the firmament, right? Let's prove that. Give me the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 22. Real quick, get Ezekiel 1 and 22. Come, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, and verse number 22. Read. 
and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. Three. And, and under hmm? and under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. So we're going into right now, we're going to be speaking about the firmament of heaven, proving that what they saw was Yahweh shot up in the firmament. Jump down to verse 26. Verse 26. Matter of fact, verse 25, Salaki. I love this thing. Read. Verse 25. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. Read. And above the firmament was, was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. Of the likeness of a throne. Read. As the appearance of a sapphire stone. As the appearance of a sapphire stone is referencing to the sky. If you know what the color of a sapphire stone is, it's like a light sky blue color. So when it's telling you they saw the likeness of something over the throne like a sapphire stone, they're referencing the firmament in the heaven. What we call heaven, they call it, it's called the firmament in the Bible. So they're referencing the firmament. So they saw a man who was sitting on a throne and under that throne was a firmament that is referencing a sapphire stone. Let's get uh, another witness on that. Give me Ezekiel 10 and 1. Real quick. Ezekiel 10 and 1. All right, this book, Ezekiel chapter 10 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. In the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Last one, Revelation 4 and 6. And then we're going to get back to the matter at hand. So what I'm doing right now is showing you what they seen. They seen Shai standing in his glory. And they said under his feet was like a paved work of sapphire stone going into the, the heavens. And they seen him sitting amongst the throne. Read. This is the book of Revelation chapter 4 and verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And it's going into the same thing. So now let's go back to Exodus 24. So now when we go back to this, we understanding what they're seeing. You know what I'm saying? Through it. They had a chariot there. You know what I'm saying? Then they seen Yahweh shine his glory from the throne. And look what Yahweh shine going to tell Moses after this. Read. Exodus 24. 10. Exodus 24 and verse 10. And they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. And as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. Read. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law. And commandments which I have written, Come on. that thou mayest teach them. Read. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. Right, now jump to verse 18. Verse 18. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So the thing is, so he said that Moses was in the mount for 40 days and 40 nights. So when we go back to 2 Ezra 14, and it tell you he was in Mount Sinai for a season. That season of transition was 40 days and 40 nights. So now let's go back to the book of 2 Ezra chapter 14. In verse 4, we're going to read down. We're going to get the context of this thing. So you got to realize we finna see, and if you, you know, if you're new to it and you never heard it before, there were certain things given to Moses concerning the, the times that they were in, the middle of times, and the end of times. So you know what I'm saying? And this is what we're about to read about right now. So let's go to that. So in the second verse, chapter 14 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt right. and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai. Where I, where I held him by me a long season Read. and told him many wondrous things Read. and showed him the secrets of the times and the end and commanded him saying, these words shall thou declare and these shall thou hide. And so he showed Moses the end. He showed him the midst of times, the end of times. So he showed Moses the Israelites 
going into captivity again, he showed Moses that we he showed Moses that the Israelites wasn't gonna keep the part of the covenant that they agreed to keep. He showed Moses that Jerusalem being thrown down in 70 AD and Israel being scattered abroad. And he also showed Moses us coming together at the end days, repenting and coming back to the most highest commandments. Read. Verse 7. And now I say unto thee that thou lay up in thy heart the signs that I have showed. And now God is telling Ezra, now the same signs that he's gave Ezra, he's telling him to lay them up, cause them to come to his mind, read. And the dreams that thou hast seen, and the interpretations which thou hast heard, read. For thou shalt be taken away from all. So the same way that Moses was taken away from all, now the Most High through his son, Yahweh Shai and the angel, is telling Ezra that he's going to be taken away from all, read. And from henceforth thou shalt remain with my son, and with such as be like thee, read. until the times be ended. Until the times be ended, until everything be fulfilled, read. For the world had lost his youth, and the times begin to wax old. So it's talking about the world. So it's saying the world is aging, it's waxing old, and it's not like it was in the beginning of days. It's getting older and older, read. For the world is divided into 12 parts. So the world is... It says it's divided into 12 parts, meaning 12 sections or 12 historical periods or timelines. So we are living in the 12th period. It says 12 periods to the earth. You know what I'm saying? He just read and said that it's divided into 12 parts and the 10 parts are gone. So 10 parts or 10 periods of this world is already gone, read. And the 10 parts of it are gone already. And half of a 10 part, right? And there remaineth that which is after the half of the 10 part. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. So now he's telling them during the time when this was during the time of the Persians and the Medes that ten and a half parts of the world was gone. And there's only two and a half parts left. So now he's telling Ezra that, guess what? It's two and a half parts left. So now it's time for you to get yourself together and get your mind right. Because why? The world is about to end as we know it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to think during the time of Ezra, that was thousands and thousands. That was almost 2,000 plus years ago. So now you're telling me that if that was 10, two, two plus thousand years ago and that was the 10th period of the world, what time of the clock are we in now? When you really read that, when you really read this and you look at it with a spiritual eye, this is where you get the doomsday clock. You know what I'm saying? We living in that last hour, right? So you got to understand if it was the 10th and a half period of the world gone, you know what I'm saying? Before noonday or put it on like in the time where it's, we're referring to it as a clock. How much more time is left on the clock now? So let's take heed to what the Most High through his son and the angels is telling Ezra. Read verse 13 again. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. He said, first, set thy house in order. So let's see what type of manner of man was Ezra. Give me the book of Ezra 7. He told Ezra to set his house in order. What is that reference to? Get yourself straight. Get your household straight. You know what I'm saying? To do this job, you have to make sure everybody is good, right? Read. So let's get this in Ezra 7 real quick. And start at verse 9. Come on, verse 9. Second oh. Ezra chapter 7 and verse 9. If this city now were Second given... Ezra, I mean, Ezra 7 and 9, bro. So lock it. Oh. Ezra 7 and 9. So we're going to read about what type of man that Ezra was, what type of mentality he had, what type of goals he had in mind when he read these things. Did he just read these things and chop it up amongst the chief of Israel to make himself look cool? Or did he take the words of the Most High series and, you know what I'm saying, put action behind his feet and, you know what I'm saying, made haste to the things that the Most High told him to do? Read this thing, Ezra 7 and 9. Let's look at Ezra, Ezra chapter 7 and verse 9. For upon the first day of the first month, began he to go up from Babylon. Read. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. Read. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. So he did what? Had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. So Ezra prepared his heart to seek, you know what I'm saying, the most high read. And to do it. So he, he went and inquired about the law. And then once he inquired about the law, he kept the law. Read. And to teach Israel or teach in Israel statutes and judgments. And he taught Ezra in Israel statutes and judgments. So it was a three-step process that he did when he put his house in order. He learned the law. Then he applied the law. Then he went out and taught the law. You know what I'm saying? And it's also, that's a similar thing that, you know what I'm saying? How was I told Peter as well? Get Luke 12, I mean 22 and 31. 
No, Luke 22 and 31. We're going to read about this in Luke 22 and 31. So Yahweh Shah also, you know what I'm saying, told Peter the same thing. Read, watch this. It's the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you. Read. That he may sift you as wheat. Read. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail not. So Yahweh Shai said he did a prayer for Peter that his faith fail not. Because why? It was trying things on him. Satan was trying to sift Peter out of the truth. But Yahweh Shai said he prayed for Peter that his faith fail not. Read. And when thou art converted. And when thou art converted, meaning what? Peter had some things that he had to examine. He had to repent. There were certain things he had to set in order. You know what I'm saying? Read. Strengthen thy brother. And then strengthen your brother. So get yourself together. Purge off the things. Remove certain things from yourself that's not useful. Then go and strengthen your brother. Like the Most High told Ezra. You know what I'm saying? Set thy house in order. Then go reprove thy people. Right? Get the book of Acts real quick. Chapter 9 and verse 15. Because we all know the lifestyle that Paul lived when he first came into this thing. They said Paul, you know what I'm saying, was one of the most wicked during that time. Who killed more, you know, Christ followers than Paul, right? So let's read about Paul. So when Paul, you know what I'm saying, got the scales taken off of his eyes and he had to repent, let's see what happened with him as well. Read that. Acts chapter 9. 15. Come. Verse 15. 15. Come on. This is the book of Acts chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings, and the children of Israel. So this is the most high talking to Ananias. Read on. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Read. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Yahweh, Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. So Ananias was sent to give Paul back his sight in his eyes that he might see and to fill him with the Holy Ghost. Right? Read. The Spirit of the Most High. Read. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. And he received sight forwith and arose and was baptized. And he was baptized. Read with the word. Read. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days. With the disciples which were at Damascus. Getting built up. And read. Watch this. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues. And he went straightway. He didn't delay. He, he, he figured out what it was. He repented. He got built up through the disciples. And straightway ASAP went out there and started doing the work. You know what I'm saying? So how much more should we be? Now go back to 2nd Ezra 14. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 13. 13 yeah. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 14 and verse 13. Read. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. So when you look at this from another level, it's showing you that what? What is the Bible telling us here? He told Ezra that ten and a half parts of the world was gone. And there is only two and a half parts of the world left before destruction comes. So before the destruction comes, God, through the angels, is telling Ezra to get your house in order. Set your house in order. Get yourself straight. So that what? He might be saved because he got a job for him. Hey, bro, I need you to get yourself together first. You know what I'm saying? And then I need you to go and reprove your people. It's not hear the warnings of the Lord and then you that same wicked man. Now you take your wickedness and now you go teach other people. Because why? When they look at your works, they're going to see that it's hypocrisy. So before you can take on this work that the Lord give you, you have to examine yourself. You know what I'm saying? And what? Reprove yourself and set your house in order first. Then go reprove somebody else. Get 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 because you got to reprove yourself. When you're learning all these things, you have to continue to set your house in order. You just can't hear these words and think you more better than the next man. And, oh, well, you know, ain't too much I need to examine by myself. Like you just the perfect man on the earth, right? Read that. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse number 5. Read. Examine yourself. He said, examine yourself. So if you got to set your house in order, if your house shine through the spirit, through this word, tells you that destruction is coming and you need to set your house in order, how would you know what your house needs fixing if you don't go back and examine it? You know what I'm saying? How would you know that you got a leak? How, did, how would you know that you got a leak from coming from your car if you don't go under there and examine and see, like, what's going on? Where is this dripping coming from? 
You know what I'm saying? How would you tell if your house is, you know what I'm saying, is about to cave in if you don't examine and see the roof uh, coming out? You know what I'm saying? So you have to examine yourself, Reed. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Reed. Prove your own selves. Reed. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ, Hamashiach Yahweh is in you, except ye be reprobates. Right. Give me Revelations 3 and 2. So now setting your house in order calls for you to examine yourself. You got to figure out where you, you know what I'm saying, are going off, where your strengths are, and where your weaknesses are to complete this task the right way, read. This is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2. Read. Be watchful. So you got to be watchful. You have to examine. You have to observe, read. And strengthen the things which remain. And you got to strengthen the things which remain within yourself, read. That are ready to die. That are ready to die, read. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. And the Most High said he has not found your works perfect. So we all have to realize that right now we still in the battle. We still have to examine ourselves. We still have to purge off certain things that's within you, right? Because what you got to understand is that, bro, for the Most High to use you the way you have to do, for the way for the Most High to move and use you in the way that he need, you got to have clean hands. The Most High didn't allow King David to build up his temple because why? His hands weren't clean. He had blood on his hands. So you got to understand to do this work that we must do, you got to have clean hands. Read. Oh, no, it's not. There's it on there. Give me Isaiah 52 and 1. So we going into setting your house in order, man. You got to set your house in order. You know what I'm saying? Set yourself in order. Get yourself straight. You can't be walking in this truth feeling like you already got it. And you don't got to examine yourself. And you can still bring some of your nigga man, you know what I'm saying, into this work that the most high got for you. You got to learn how to let the nigga man go. Let the old man go, right? Read. Book of Isaiah 52. 52. Verse 1. Stay with me, bro. Isaiah 52 and verse 1. Come This is book of Isaiah 52 and verse 1. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. So the Most High is telling us to awake, awake, gather yourself, wake up out that sleep, take the scales off your eyes and put on your strength. We have to put on our strength as the Israelites, right? Read. Put on thy beautiful garments. And put on thy beautiful garments. So we're going to deal with the first portion of that. He said, awake, awake, and put on your strength. You know what I'm saying? How are you going to put on something that you don't know what it is? Is he talking about your biceps, your triceps? Is he talking about your bench press? Is he talking about how much you can put on your back and squat? He's saying put on your strength. What is your strength? Read me. Give me Job 6 and 11. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you brothers and sisters, when you realize why you keep falling off in this truth, because sometimes we don't know what our strength is. Even the mighty prophet Job is referencing the book of Job. What is my strength, right? Why say we're going to read about that? Job 6 and 11. Come on. This book of Job, chapter 6, and verse number 11. Read. That what is my strength that I should hope? And what is mine end that I should prolong my life? He said, what is my, read that again. What is my strength? So a lot of you brothers got to realize when you're ready to put on your strength, you have to acknowledge and realize what is my strength. Read. That I should hope. That I should hope in, in during these last days. Read on. And what is my end? And what is my end? If I don't find my strength, what is the end that's beholding coming to me? Read. That I should prolong my life. That I should prolong my life. Right? This is what your strength is. When you find out this is what your strength is and you got to put on this strength, this is something you got to come back to. Right? Give me the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 22 and verse 33. Real quick. 2 Samuel 22 and 33. So we got to find out what our strength is. You can't put on something that you're unaware of. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know this is to you and you don't know this is what your, your, where your source of uh, life and fight come from, you won't have your fight, right? Read, watch this. It's the book of 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 33. Read. God, Yahweh is my strength. He says what? God, Yahweh is my strength. He says, Yahweh is my strength. Read. And power. And what? And power. Watch this, read. And he make it my way perfect. And he make your way perfect. So when you understand that the most high is your strength, you he'll make your way perfect or what? You will be able to cast off the old man. You will be able to put on the strength and set your house in order and go reprove your people. But if you don't know where your strength come from, you won't. You will continue to be that same brother or that same sister who's still stagnant in your walk in the truth and wondering why day by day, you know what I'm saying, you're not putting on or you're not progressing, right? You know what I'm saying? So from there, give me uh, 1 Chronicles 16 and 11. Get the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 11.
Watch this. All right. First Chronicles 16, 11. Come on, this is the book of First Chronicles 16 and verse 11. Seek the Lord and his strength. So you got to seek the most high and his strength for you to get, to be able to put on your beautiful strength. Read. Seek his face continually. Uh-huh. Remember his marvelous works that he have done. And how will you remember the marvelous acts? By getting in the Bible. It's showing you where your strength source comes from. Our strength comes from Yahweh by Hashem. Yahweh shot through his words. Read that again. Remember his marvelous works that he have done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Read. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. So this is how you do that. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand that you got to come back to the Bible. You got to come back to your strength. Give me Isaiah 52 and 1 again. Oh, this is the book of Isaiah chapter 52 and verse number 1. Read. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. So it's telling us to come back to the Bible, come back to our source of strength, our source of life. You know what I'm saying? O Zion, read. Put on thy beautiful garments. And he said, put on your beautiful garment. What makes your garment so beautiful? Give me Ecclesiastes 9 and 8. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 8. Because you got to understand it's a precept for everything. You know what I'm saying? So what makes your garment beautiful? Read when you get it. Come on. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 8. Read. Let thy garments be always white. Let thy garments what? Be always white. Read. And let thy head lack no ointment. And let your head lack no ointment. So what it's going into is the purity. Give me Isaiah 118, right? So you got to understand he's saying that the, the way that your garments be beautiful, because I know a lot of times we use this precept to say, low. we got a fire garment on. I got the big Judah. I got a big lion on the back of my garment. My garment black and red. My garment black and gold. My garment purple and gold. My garment white and green. But when you read this on a spiritual level, it's going into your garment on the spiritual side. Meaning if your garment is stained, or is your garment white and beautiful? Period. Watch this. Read that. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Read. Come now and let us reason together, mm -hmm. said the Lord. Read. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. So though your skins be as scarlet, they bloody, they evil, they off, they like a filthy rag. But he said, I will what? They shall be as white as snow. And they shall be as white as snow because why we got opportunities to repent now through your house shot. Right? right? So now you got to keep your garments beautiful. You got to make sure that your garments are beautiful. They are white. They are pure. You know what I'm saying? When you read about the Most High's garment, he had on a white garment. When you read about Yahweh Shai, he had on a white garment. When you think about the transfiguration, he transfigured into something white, pure. You know what I'm saying? So now go back to 2 Ezra chapter 14. And now, you know what I'm saying? We're going to go to uh, verse number 14. Uh, the book of 2 Ezra chapter 14. Verse number 14. Yeah, come. Let go from the mortal thoughts. He said what? Let go from the mortal thoughts. So we have to, to, to realize what's going on right now in the last day we living in. He said you got to let go of the mortal thoughts. You know what I'm saying? You got to cast off the mortal thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Give me Proverbs 12 and 5. So you got to let go of the mortal thoughts, the thoughts of a, a man, of the flesh. We got to let go of the thoughts of the flesh, right? Read this. Verse 25. Right? On this book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 5. Mm-hmm. The thoughts of the righteous are right. He said the thoughts of the righteous are right. What makes us right? The commandments yes. of God according to Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Read. But the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The counsels of the wicked are deceit. Give me Proverbs 15 and 6. Uh, Proverbs 15 and verse 6. Read. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. He said in the house of the righteous is much treasure. But in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Read. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. Uh, so like I think I want Psalms fifteen and six. Psalms fifteen and six. Yeah, come on. Good though. Psalms fifteen and six. Nah. No, you don't want that. Nah, this is, I don't know what I was thinking about. Proverbs fifteen. Proverbs. What, do you want to preset what you Oh, Proverbs out? 16 and 3. So like. Proverbs 16 and 3. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Let's move to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Read. And thy thoughts shall be established. And when you commit yourself yeah. to the most, how your thoughts will be established. So you got to let go of the mortal man. So when you're not holding on to this mortal man in our mind, oh, thinking about, oh, 
bro, I need to get the new Madden that's finna come out. Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? I know, you know, we living in the last days, but this other job over here, you know what I'm saying? They paying the rack. I'll be making 150000 a year if I get this job, but I might have to work three Sabbaths out the month, though, man. You know what I'm saying? Wait, man, the most I know my heart, I can get more arms. And it's like, you thinking like a mortal, man, but when you're not thinking about, oh, man, it's time. I got to do this work. If the Lord say destruction is coming and we, we got two and a half, you know what I'm saying? We got two and a half parts of the world left. Hey, man, I got to think about my people. I got to go get right. The most I tell us to let go of more of the thoughts. So I'm not going to be thinking about these things. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be getting caught up in the, the popularity and the fame of this world in the last days. You know what I'm saying? Like some of our people are. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers not holding on to their strength, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers is slipping, slipping on their pimping. You know what I'm saying? Not on the corner level. Brothers, it just is what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? Brothers is taking their hand off the plow, slowly putting their sword back in their pocket. You slowly know what I'm saying? Sure. Slowly but for shortly, man. Brothers not staying strong in this thing. Brothers not taking heed to the advice that the Most High gave our forefathers, right? Why? Because the times of the Lord is not hasting like they was in the ancient world, right? Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 5. You know what I'm saying? So you got to let go of the mortal thoughts. But how, how do you let go of the mortal thoughts? By replacing them with the spiritual thoughts. You know what I'm saying? You got to replace these things with the spiritual thoughts. Read this. Come, this is the book of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 5. Read. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteous. So when you, are dil when you are a diligent brother, your mind is set on the work of the Lord. It says the, the thoughts of the diligent only tend to what? Plenteousness. Plenteousness. Like we in the harvest, the growth of the vineyard. What is the vineyard? The nation of Israel, we are a vineyard to the Lord. Read. But of everyone that is hasty, only to one. And, but the ones that are hasty and they making their way, rushing in this truth, they only thinking about the things that they want. You know what I'm saying? They're thinking about, oh, we're supposed to be thinking about examining yourself, getting over smoking weed, smoking blacks, popping women, popping heathen, anything that's wicked. But you over here thinking about ways you can expand your business, thinking about how much money you need to invest in the Bitcoin so you can get a little, you know what I'm saying, a little change in your pocket. When the Lord tell you, when you're diligent, you're thinking about the things that will make your boy your way prosperous in his truth, not prosperous in your own personal life, right? So now go to the book of Isaiah 55 and 7. Go to the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 7. So what we are here doing, man, we're trying to get this kingdom, man. We done with Babylon. It's oppression here. It's affliction here. Unjust murders of our people here. How long are we going to be content being here? How long are we going to try to be some in a place that wants us dead? You know what I'm saying? How long... The hell going on? How long are we going to try to, you know what I'm saying, strengthen and further the riches of a country that preys on our demise? Man, you got to ask yourself that. Read this. So like in this upcoming election, we got two candidates that's not even worth trying to help this nation. Right. Trump and Kamala. Like, come on. Right. This, this world finished, man. And either way it go, whoever get in office, I mean, it's already going to be some, it's already going to be hell on earth in this nation. So it's going right. to get worse. Then it's gonna get better. So we can't say that this place is gonna be peaceful. Stop saying that um, you know, we need Jesus and all that. No, no, this place is gonna be done. This it. Time's ticking. So yeah, that's all I wanna say on that part, man. Cool. <laughs> all right, so you yeah, Isaiah fifty five seven. You're right. Come on, this book Isaiah fifty five and verse seven. Mm -hmm. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let what? Let the wicked forsake his way. So when they say, you know what I'm saying, when you go back to the book of second, as it tells you to let go from the immortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. What's the biggest burden of man, bro? It's sin. A lot of brothers not letting go of their sin, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of brothers really getting rushed to the platform to teach and not being taught. You know what I'm saying? This is why you don't you don't have the understanding of letting go of these from the mortal man. A lot of brothers not even taught how to love your brother, how to check on your brother, how to be there for a brother. You know what I'm saying? The only thing y'all brothers expect for brothers is to show up at camp, read for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, if you need a precept in the back, hey, look this up on your phone. Brother, think brothers in this truth is their assistance now, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad. You know what I'm saying? Brothers not there building each other up, preparing for the things to come. 
Brothers not checking on their brothers to see like, hey, bro, anything you need help with and studying or just anything. We not being there for each other because why? We too focused on our own lives. You know what I'm saying? Even when you're not around the Israelites, brothers were, brothers put friends on from Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. And right after that, what happened? They take the, they take the little friend shirt off. They finna go put the Ralph Lauren on, the Da Vinci, the Dosi and Gabbana, and they not focused on the camp no more. You know what I'm saying? What they focus on? Brothers worried about who they finna pop at sundown, man. Brothers worried about what they finna go eat, who they finna go turn up with. They brothers, you know what I'm saying? Some brothers be on the damn line at camp on damn, uh, what's that Jordan app? Brothers be looking at the app trying to see what new Jordan's coming out. You know what I'm saying? No Linking up their app to pay to see can they pay $50 every other week to get the brand new shoes. Brothers not worried about salvation. I'll read that again. Come, let the wicked forsake his way. So the Bible says, let the wicked forsake his way. Knowing that the Most High is about to bring judgment to this earth. The Lord says, let the wicked forsake his way. Read. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. So brothers, know. We know what thoughts be in our mind on a day-to-day -day basis. The Lord says we have to forsake those thoughts. Get them thoughts out your mind. You know what I'm saying? Because why? Destruction is coming to Babylon. The Most High, his, through his son, Yahweh Shai, is looking for the diligent. The brothers who got their mind on being plenteous in his truth. And not hastings for the wants of the things of this life. That's who the Most High is looking for, man. Give me Jeremiah 14. I mean, 4 and 14. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 4 and verse 14. So, as the title of this is, you got to understand, take heed to the morning that the Most High has given us and let go of the old man. A brother's got to let go of the old man, right? You can't think that, oh, your old man can bring benefit to the Most High's nation and to this truth, because it's not. The old man ain't going to bring up more temptations, more stumbling blocks, more offenses to your brothers and your sisters around you. And what eventually what it end up happening is the most high I move you out the way because you're not profitable. You're not studying like you're supposed to. You're not praying like you're supposed to. Brothers be more full focused on, you know what I'm saying, adding three, four wives to their arsenal than getting their spirit right within. Brother ain't even got a prosperous marriage with the wife they got right now. You know what I'm saying? You thinking about adding three, four more. Brothers over here, you know what I'm saying, going and blasting other jakes that they need to love their people and come back to God. But sometimes, you know what I'm saying, you hate brothers and sisters that were friends just right beside you. You know what I'm saying? So in these last days, we got to let these carnal ways go. You know what I'm saying? All the backbiting, all the murmuring, all the slandering, all the thinking evil on each other because we living in the last times. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's three brothers beside you, whether it's 10 brothers or 50 brothers beside you, we still have to have that same diligence and that same love to inspire and, inspire and push each other to get this kingdom, man. You know what I'm saying? Some brothers don't even give a damn about teaching on the corners no more. People don't. A lot of brothers content with just cutting YouTube on, getting deep breakdowns from certain individuals that they got respect for. And it is what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? They got the Bible. They putting it in their storehouse. They storing their talent and they breakdowns in their napkin. And when your house shot come, a lot of brothers going to get killed for that, man. A lot of brothers don't take it serious and thank the most high that on a Saturday, the day that he gave us as a sign between us and him, that we take out, the, we go out there and feed our brothers and sisters this gospel. But instead, brothers be selfish. You want to sit at home. You want to, you know, wake up, walk to the couch, tell your wife to go fix you a sandwich with a salad on the side and a couple hot chips. And oh yeah, bring me a beer. Then by three o'clock, you know what I'm saying? Go and pop that bottle open. I'm going to get on YouTube and see what's going on on these Hebrew streets. You know what I'm saying? You got to examine yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? Shalom, Kanal Khan, King. Now go to uh, Jeremiah 4.14. Read that. Come the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse number 14. Read. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness. He said what? Wash thine heart from wickedness. So he's telling you to wash your mind from wickedness, man. He, when he tell you let go of the, the mortal thoughts, the, the Bible through Jeremiah just told us to wash our heart from wickedness. What are you washing it with? The word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You got to wash your mind from this wickedness, man. A lot of times we have our minds set on too much wickedness. But sometimes we be sitting over here thinking about a brother we don't like in his truth with and done us hurt at home. Sometimes we thinking about everything. Light bill got to be paid. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I need more hours at the job. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I want to study when I get home. But, you know, I got to do this. I got to do that. No, I told you to wash your mind from wickedness, man. Read. 
That thou mayest be saved. That what? That thou mayest be saved. If we're not washing our mind, the most high said we're not going to be saved, man. Simply as that. Because you got to understand the thoughts are a powerful thing. Whatever you think it in your mind, so is he. That was according to the scriptures. Give me uh, Proverbs 23 and 7 and then Proverbs 24 and 9. Real quick. Proverbs 23 and 7. Real quick. Read that. So this is the book of Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Read. For as he thinketh in his heart. So the, the most I said, for as a man thinketh in his heart. Read. So is he. So is he. So, bro, if you ain't thinking about number women all day, them the only thing you're going to produce in your life. Looking for women. Finding ways to pull women. If you're a brother who only thinking about going back into the world, popping women, trapping with your homeboys, selling dope. Why can new shoe get what your mind gonna end up resorting back to that same thing? So the most I tell you to keep your mind set, and this is why when you read the book of Jeremiah four fourteen again, he tells you, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. Because if you're not washing your mind now, you're not truly gonna change. If you're still thinking about that man you was in the world, that those brothers like to quote it, oh, I was a real nigga in the world. I stood on business. You know what I'm saying? Niggas know I was sliding. Man, the most I don't give a damn what you was sliding on. Because for one, you was sliding on your own people. So you got to think about if you still thinking about how you was that hardcore so-called OG in your mind in the world, get what, get what type of mentality and mindset you're going to bring to the body. You're going to bring that old, too tough OG, you know what I'm saying, still think you a certified street nigga mindset to the body. And what is it going to show? You ain't nothing but a wicked carnal man who still talks street slang and just know a couple of precepts now. But is it going to grow? Is it going to bring truth and repentance to other people? These are things that we got to think about. Give me Proverbs 24 and 9. Because the book of Proverbs 24 and verse 9. Read. The thought of the foolish is sin. He said the thought of the foolish is sin. So if you a brother in this truth, always getting caught up in thinking about the foolishness of your past life. You know what I'm saying? You chopping it up with brothers how you used to cut everything you wanted to cut. You sitting back thinking at home instead of reading the Bible and examining yourself, instead of checking on your brothers, man, you thinking about, oh, how mighty you was in the world. You know what I'm saying? How you was the best street rapper in the world or how you had this or you had that or you talking about how you used to whore out your sister. The most I said, the thought of foolishness is sin, right, Reed? And the scorner is an abomination to men. And Reed. If thou faint in the day of adversity. And if you faint in the day of your adversity, when the most high put these trials and these afflictions on you and you faint, read. Thy strength is small. And your strength is weak because why? Your strength ain't the most high, like the Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel 22 and the 33rd verse. Your strength not the most high. Your strength is all your wills and your desires and your lusts. And this is why a lot of brothers is fainting in the last days, man. And deep down in your mind, you see now that while we living in these last days, women are more whorish. Man, sins that used to be hard to kind of get to back in the day, they're right there at your doorstep now. And instead of looking at it and realizing that this is Satan trying to sift you out the truth, brothers is embracing it head on. You know what I'm saying? Brothers see all these horrid women on Instagram shooting they shot now because you might have grew a little beard. You got a job now that pay you good so you can kind of go buy the real earrings. You went and paid 500 for a necklace and now you got all the new shoes and now what you doing? You kind of slowly stepping away from your brothers. You know what I'm saying? You can afford to go pay 300 for some earrings, but you can't afford to go, you know what I'm saying, put $20, $30 into some fringes to put, you know what I'm saying, fringes on your shirt. You got to examine yourself, bro, and realize that, bro, your strength is small because your strength is not in the most high. Your strength is in yourself. And that's why brothers is slowly but for surely falling out this thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's go back. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and we're going to go to verse number 1. So the thing of this whole topic is, man, you know, we got to take heed to the warnings that the Most High has given to us. And you got to let go of the old man. The old man is not ready for the things that's coming our way. The old man not going to be ready for Jacob's trouble because what the old man going to do? When the tough get tough, hey, the rest going to get going. He going to get on down. You're going to follow yourself. You're going to find yourself on the other side back with your corner family talking about, yeah, this too much. I ain't with all this. And then you're going to be blaming other brothers who standing stiffly for the Lord. Read. 
comes to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Read. Having therefore these promises. So we got promises of the kingdom of eternal life if we overcome and endure. Read. Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. So we got to let ourselves go from the burdens of man. The Bible is letting you know that the burdens of man is all filthiness. Read. Of the flesh. Of the what? Of the flesh. And of the burden of man. Read. And spirit. Read. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In now, the fear of God. Give me Hebrews 12 and 1 real quick, man. You know what I'm saying? This is what it's all about, bro. This truth is not about learning the mysteries of the most high. Now you just the deepest and the mightiest brother on the earth. No, it's about hearing these things, taking heed to them, applying them to your life and going to correct and to reprove your other brothers and teaching them that we must strengthen each other and come together and endure these things so we can go back to our homeland, man. Read. Hebrews 12 and 1. Come. Come. This book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Read. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And we truly are, man. When you think about it, bro, we got so many great witnesses in this Bible that it showed us how we can endure certain things and overcome almost anything that this life should throw at you. You know what I'm saying? It ain't not one thing that our forefathers went through that we ain't went through. So we got a great crowd of witnesses in front of us, man. You know what I'm saying? We got a great cloud of witnesses. It's mighty men in this Bible that have paved the way for us to endure and overcome. And they didn't share their experiences with us. That what when we read about their experiences, we get that dignity and hope within ourselves that we can overcome, read. Let us lay aside every weight. And you got to lay, lay aside every weight. What weighs on a man? His sins, his lust. You know what I'm saying? Shalom, y'all can talk. You know what I'm saying? All these things are the things that weigh on the man. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Family members leaving you. Your wife might leave you. Your kids might leave you. You know what I'm saying? You got to let these things that weigh you down go. Read. And the sin which do it so easily beset us. And the sins that set you back. Read. And let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. And we got to run the race that, you know what I'm saying, that's set before us with patience, right? So now let's go back to 2 Ezra 14 real quick. You know what I'm saying? Shalom, Yeriel. Shalom, King. Yahweh Bashi, Yahweh Shabarak, Atah. So this is what this is all about, man. In the last days, the Most High is looking to see, because you got to think what Yahweh, I said, when he returns, shall he find faith on earth? Because why? It's so much temptation and lust out here. That a lot of brothers is losing, you know what I'm saying, focus on what brought them to this truth. A lot of brothers are, for you know, uh, abandoning their first love. You know what I'm saying? They can give a damn about it now because why? It's not the popular thing in the earth, in the world, in the earth. You know what I'm saying? What's the popular thing in the earth? Sin, lust. You know what I'm saying? All these different evils. These are the things that's easily besetting us. Brothers feeling themselves. These are things that's, you know what I'm saying, taking brothers' first love away from them, right? Read this. Second Ezra 14. You want um, 13 or 14? No, 15. Come on. This is second Ezra 14. Verse 14, Shalak. In verse 14. Right. Let go from these mortal thoughts. Right. Cast away the burdens of man. Read. Put off now the weak nature. Which is the flesh. Put off the weak nature of your flesh. Right. Read. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. And what thoughts really plague us, man? How we going to survive? Brothers be suffering in these last days. And sometimes brothers be trying to figure out where their next meal going to come from, where their next paycheck going to come from. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times these things beset us in our mind and put us back. Hold this, get Matthew 6. You know what I'm saying? I want to show you what, the, what your house shot said concerning it. Matthew 6 and verse 25. So sometimes it be thoughts of stress and the things that we're going through in this life that sometimes weigh us down, man. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. Matthew 6, 25. Come on, this book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 25. Read. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. So yeah, how was I told us, man? Hey, man, don't be taking thought of your life, man. Don't take thought of the things that's going on in your life. Read. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What you should put on. And when you read on down, he's going to let you know that you got birds, you got grass, all these certain things. Don't think about where that meal are coming from with their growth. These things, you know what I'm saying, get taken of by the most high. So jump down to verse 33 for the sake of time. No, verse uh, 31. Therefore, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Read. For after all these things do the Gentiles see. And that's the key point of this. The Gentiles worry about the things of this world. You know what I'm saying? We can't be worrying about the things of these world. Read. For your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So what should be our mindset and our focus? Read that next verse. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God. So we're supposed to be seeking the kingdom of God on our mind. You know what I'm saying? That's where the plenty is comes from. Mm -hmm. When we just read about read. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And everything else in your life will be added unto you, man. Right? So now go back to 2nd Ezra 14 and verse 15 again. 2nd Ezra 14 and verse 14. Read. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Verse 15, King. Go on, verse 15. Set aside and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee right. and haste thee to flee from these times. And the Bible says to haste thee to flee from these times. He said, make haste to flee from the times that you're living in, man. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 1 and verse 21. I mean 21 and verse uh, 1. Salaki. Sirach 1 verse 21. You know what I'm saying? You got to haste from these times. How, what else do you need to make haste within fleeing from the times that we're living in, delivering yourself from the destruction, what must you also get rid of, right? This is what you got to understand and take heed to read that. The 22. Sirach 21 and 1. Oh, this book of Sirach 21 and verse 1. Read. My son, has thou sinned? Do so no more. Read. But ask pardon for thy former sins. So you need to ask, you need to ask for forgiveness for your former sins. Read on. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. So the things that you know that easily beset you, that cause you to go off the most high, so you got to flee from those things like you fleeing from a serpent, man. Read. For if thou comest too near it, right, it will bite thee. It will what? It will bite thee. Read. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion. And he said the teeth of is as the teeth of a lion, read. Slaying the souls of men. And they'll slay you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to flee from the sin that easily weighs you down and besets you. Now go back to Second Ezra. Now go to verse 16. Huh. And this is the whole thing. This is why you have to get your mind right before the day comes, read. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 16. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. And he told Ezra that the things that he sees right now ain't got nothing compared to the things that's going to be in the last days and the days that we're living in. So how much more should we take more heed to the advice that the spirit and gave Ezra? You know what I'm saying? How much more should we take heed to that? You know what I'm saying? We are in the last days. You know what I'm saying? Keep reading. For well, look, how much the world shall be weaker through age. And the world is going to get weaker and weaker through the age as we see now, read. So much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. And evil's going to, you know what I'm saying, increase in these last days. Give me the book of uh, Michael chapter 7. You know what I'm saying? When you look at the world these last days, you know what I'm saying? Being a righteous and a good man is not a popular thing in Babylon. You know what I'm saying? People doing what the hell they want to do. People, you know what I'm saying... They love who they want to love and hate who they want to hate. And there's more hate than there's love in these last days. Read. Verse 1. Verse one. Come on, this is Micah chapter 7 and verse 1. Read. Woe is me. Right. For I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits. Right. As the grapelings of the vintage. Right. There is no cluster to eat. And he say just like that. Read. Watch this. My soul desires the first ripe, tr uh, first ripe fruit. Right. The good man is perished out of the earth. And the Bible says through Micah that the good man is perished out of the earth. In the last days, the the the, uh, the spirit of having a good heart is gone from man in these last days. Read. And there is none upright among men. And there is what? There is none upright among men. And he said there is none upright among men, Mike, right? because everybody's after their own game. Brothers is killing brothers. You know what I'm saying? People are betraying one another. Keep reading on that. They all lie and wait for blood. And they what? They all lie and wait for blood. And they all lying and waiting for blood. Brothers is looking to deceive each other, backdoor each other. You know what I'm saying? So what type of spirit are you moving in, right, Reed? They hunt every man his brother with a net. And they hunt every man a brother his net, right? So, you know what I'm saying? The whole point of this, you know what I'm saying? And we'll jump back on this at another topic. But the whole point was is to let go of the from the mortal thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Repent. Examine yourself. Strengthen yourself. You know what I'm saying? That you may take heed to the warning and the destruction that's coming to this place. You know what I'm saying? So give me uh, Revelation 3 and 2 again. This is the last verse. So we're going to cut it short here. So I pray, you know what I'm saying, that, that whoever hit, this got this message or this word hit, and you take heed to it and examine it, man, because Yahweh Shai is finna return. And what you really got to ask yourself is who really is ready to meet Yahweh Shai? You know what I'm saying? Who really ready to re meet this austere man who's going to crack the clouds and come down here and bring destruction on our enemies and all those who don't want to serve him? You know what I'm saying? What we should be doing right now is gathering together. Real quick, hold that. Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. Watch this. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we read this scripture 
And you know what I'm saying? We read it in the context that we just need to gather together. But a lot of time we don't look at the importance of why we need to be gathering together right now. Right? Read that. This is Zephaniah 2 and verse 1. Read. Gather yourselves together. Read. Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. Read. Before the decree bring forth. So what we're supposed to be doing is, bro, we're supposed to be gathering together before the decree or the judgment bring forth. The judgment of God. Right now, we're supposed to be out here gathering our brothers and our sisters back together because the Lord is coming to destroy and annihilate this place. When Yahweh Shai get through with this place, after he beams up the chosen, he's looking, he's not looking to save a couple of people here, save a couple of people there. He's coming to annihilate everybody here, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that. So this is why when it says, gather yourselves together, O nation not desire, he's telling us to gather together before he comes to annihilate and bring judgment and vengeance on this land, man. You know what I'm saying? Read. Verse 2, keep going on there real quick. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff. Read. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Read. Before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Read. <laughs> seek, seek the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. He says, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. So the brothers and sisters that's being humble and taking heed, examine themselves and repent. He said, take heed. Read. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. And they wrought his judgment, man. So, you know, you got to take heed to these things real quick. So, right, 36 and 11, another one. So, right, 36 and 11, man. From the book of Syrac, the 36 and verse 11. Read. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together. And inherit thou them as from the beginning. So with this going into, when you read Sarai 36, it's a prayer of vengeance on our enemies. And he's saying to gather the twelve, gather the tribes of Jacob together from this destruction. Right? Read. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. Right? Read. O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name. He said what? O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name. And he said have mercy on the people that is called by thy name. So now go to uh, Revelation 3 and 2. And we about to get ready to wind it down. Revelation 3. And we're going to read that again. Read that. This is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. And God said he has not found your ways perfect. You know what I'm saying? So we in these last days, we got to continue to strengthen, be watchful of our ways, watchful of the things around us. Keep watching and seeing all these prophecies come forth. You know what I'm saying? And be fulfilled, all the judgments on the world. You know what I'm saying? We got to continue to examine ourselves, continue to endure, continue to overcome. You know what I'm saying? To stay strong in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? You got, well, no matter what goes on, whether it's two of you, like you see us right now, whether it's 10, 50, or 30 of you, we got to continue to stay strong in the Lord, continue to endure. Don't wax weak in the last days, man. Don't give up because we are seconds away from meeting your house shot. You know what I'm saying? So don't be the brother or don't be the sister that have the I wish I could have or if I would have known this spirit. You know what I'm saying? Don't be that brother or that sister. You know what I'm saying? Get Matthew 7, 21 real quick. This is one of the most fearful scriptures I ever read in my life, and I think about it daily. It have been brothers that I used to talk to all the time, and the main thing we agree about is, man, the scariest thing mm -hmm. to hear is this right here. Read this. It's Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, so enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that's a big thing you got to ponder on. He said, not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You got to med meditate on that. So it's people out here saying, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? It's people out here saying the most high Jesus Christ. The Bible is saying some of these brothers who are screaming the name of the Lord is not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because why? They're not being real with themselves. They're not examining themselves. They're not applying brotherly love. They're not keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What are they doing? They're attending to their own ways and their own lusts. And they bringing the old man into the so-called new man. They mixing the old man with the new man and they becoming one. And what's being more produced? The more wickedness of the old man. Because the old man is overthrowing the new man. You can't change to be a new person if you're still holding on to your old wicked ways, right? So you got to understand that. That's it on that. Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead and keep going. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Read. But he that doeth the will of my Father. But he that truly doing the will of the Father, your mindset is on the kingdom of God. Your mindset is on growing. Your mindset is on change. Your mindset is on being there for your brothers and your sisters. Hey, Shalom, Yaakov. Shalom. You know what I'm saying? Ask Shabbat, can you? How about you? Shabbat, You know what I'm saying? Your mindset is on the most high. Your mindset is on his people, man. You know what I'm saying? This is the mentality, and these are the things you got to be talking about. You know what I'm saying? If you a brother and you a sister who getting caught up in the drama in Israel, you got to repent and examine yourself because the scriptures tell you in Sirach 11 not to meddle in matters that don't pertain unto you because if you don't and if you do continue to meddle in them, you won't be found innocent. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be found guilty of those same charges. So in the last day, we got to scribe away from the filthiness and the foulness. We got to scribe away from the drama and the hate. We got to strive away from the lust and the sin and keep our minds on the will of the Father. The things that the Most High told us to do, these are the things that we need to keep our mind on. You know what I'm saying? Last scripture. You know what I'm saying? Get Proverbs 27 to verse 18, 17. And we're going to read down a little bit. Yeah, Proverbs 27 and 17. Right, this is the book of Proverbs 27 verse 17. Read. Iron sharpened iron. So if you're a brother who's sharp at certain things and your iron is strong on this side, the most I say you're supposed to sharpen your brother's iron as well so y'all can be sharp together. Read on. So a man sharpened his... Oh, so, the, so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. Read. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. He said, whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you are maintaining the tree that goes to life, the most high say you will eat the, tr the fruit of that. Read. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. Read. Watch this. As in water, face answer to face. Read. So the heart of man to man. So the heart of man to man. So the mind of a man to another man. So you got to be real of it. You got to keep it real with yourself. And you got to sharpen your brothers. But you can't do so far away. You got to do it face to face in the presence of your brothers, man. So, hey, man, we about to get ready to do the work. So, you know what I'm saying? Most high willing. Y'all will edify. Y'all take heed to it. You examine yourself. And you let go of the old man. You know what I'm saying? We finna be downtown on Peace Tree. You know what I'm saying? You got the saints. I mean, the anointed house of the saints, and you got the service downtown on Peace Tree. So, you know what I'm saying? Shalom. I pray brothers be saved. And you how about Shalom? Everybody say Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, man. So, man, stay in the spirit. Everybody be blessed and love you all. Shalom. Shalom.